Good day, students. It's class time. I am Kayan Gordon, and I will be guiding you through CSEC POB. This week, we're going to be looking at management in business. Let's get started. Now, for our lesson today, we have a couple objectives that we're going to be attaining. And I want you to stay tuned because at the end of our lesson, we have some trivia questions and I know that you'll be able to respond to them um, accurately. Let's look at our targets for today. So the first objective is that you must be able to define management. You must be able to also describe the functions of management as well as the responsibilities that management um, has. At the end of our lesson, you should be able to define organizational charts as well as outline the different types of charts. Construct a simple organizational chart as well as interpret these charts. Now, let's get into it. Our first brainstorm for today is, do you know the rules of management in an organization? Think about it. Now, the first thing that we'll be looking at is our first objective, and it is what is management? Now, I know that you're familiar with management because, you know, even your principal at school is a manager, and some of your parents may be managers. You may know a manager, and you might have some sort of example or idea as to what is management and what does management do? So we're going to be looking at management in two concepts. The first is that management can be defined as the process of administering and controlling the affairs of the organization, running the business. And it may be the act of creating and monitoring such a business environment wherein the members of the organization can be cohesive, work together to achieve the um, vision and mission of the organization. And the second um, strategy or the second definition of management that we'll be looking at today is the fact that management can be defined as a group of people. The persons are individuals in an organization who are in charge of um, that organization. Now, management has some key functions. And uh, if you think about it, what, what does a manager really do? What are the functions that managers play or management play within an organization? Let's look at a few of them. So the first function we'll be looking at today is planning. Managers or management plans. Management also engages in organizing, directing the operations of the organization, controlling, coordinating, delegating, and motivating. So these are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, functions of the management within, our, within an organization that we will be taking a closer look at, starting with planning. Now, I know that you understand the reason for planning within an organization. And I know that if you if you're able to respond, you would say, well, planning, everybody has to really plan their way forward. We have to have an idea as to how we carry out tasks or how an organization um, goes about achieving its objectives. So let's take a closer look at what planning involves. So the management of an organization um, must set objectives and de determine the course of action for achieving those objectives. Um, planning involves uh, short-term, medium, and long-term um, objectives for that organization. Now, in planning, it's important that uh, there's an analysis of the company's the position at a particular time. And one type of analysis that companies may do in planning the way forward is a SWOT analysis. And you will hear this if you do further um, study business beyond the CSEC level. The SWOT analysis is where uh, man management may 
assess the strengths of the organization, what are some of the good things about the organization that um, keeps it running. It may identify the weaknesses um, of the organization. What are some points for improvement within that um, organization, as well as the opportunities that are present that the organization can capitalize on. And the T of the SWOT analysis stands for the threats to the organization. And you would imagine that's one thing that the management has to plan for, to mitigate against threats, as well as to um, see how well they can um, prevent those from really affecting the organization. So planning is a key uh, function that is played within organizations and it comes from management. Management also organizes. When we talk about organization, in layman's term, we talk about sorting things and doing some arrangements. No, organizing with, by management really looks at um, developing an organizational structure and ensuring that the right human resources as well as um, capital goods are secured and positioned in the right place to ensure that the objectives of the organization are realized. Um, organizing also looks at um, using an organization chart to present a graphical representation of the structure of that organization. Organizing also involves designing the individual jobs within the organization and ensuring that those jobs have the right people positioned um, to really complete the relevant tasks that are to be carried out within that organization. The third function is directing. And uh, directing sounds like telling people um, to do tasks, right? Like if you give direction, now, management also performs directing, and it's one of the key functions. Let's look at what it involves. So directing is instructing or guiding or supervising and influencing people to really enable or empower them, well, enable them to achieve organizational objectives. Directing really involves giving instructions um, to the different levels of management as well as other subordinates within the organization. And in giving direction, it is like any other function of management, its end goal is really to achieve the objectives of the organization, the vision statement, the mission, the mission statement, um, the motto of the organization. And the directing of the oper op operation may come at different levels of the management um, within the organization. Our next function is controlling. And, uh, you know, at this point, just to, to reiterate that, even though these are the functions of management, I mean, in any establishment, some persons may object to how the establishment has been run, how management carries out its, its tasks or its functions, whether it is effective or not. Um, but these are the functions of a manager or, or a management team within an organization and controlling is one of them. We say controlling involves ensuring that performance does not deviate from standards, holding um, staff accountable, and ensuring that um, the staff performs according to the objectives that are stipulated. So controlling consists of three steps. It includes establishing performance standards. People within your organization, within any establishment, must know what are the standards of work, what are the standards that they must meet or try to exceed in their performance in the organization. And Management is responsible for comparing the actual performance of, of, of those um, staff or um, capital goods in the establishment with uh, the standards that have been set. And 
management may also take corrective action wherever necessary. So an act of controlling may be um, giving staff appraisals and assessing how staff is performing, as well as assessing how the equipment. In some cases where we have a capital intensive workforce, where we have more uh, machinery in use, um, replacing manual labor, they may also assess how well um, these machinery uh, are carrying out the expected task. Are they effective? Is there efficiency with the production process and so on? So management must really perform the task of controlling, assessing whether the performance standards are being met by um, labor or capital within the organization. Now, coordinating is another key function of management within the organization. And if you think about it, you know, coordination involves uh, ensuring that things work together Moving parts are working together. So let's look at how management may coordinate. So we say that coordination is a function of management which ensures that the different departments and groups work in synchronization. So management coordinates with the goal of achieving unity of action among the employees, groups, and departments. And in coordinating, sometimes what management may do is to trans translate or to pass down the objectives of the organization or the way forward to the um, lower, ma lower level managers and in doing so transfer that information to employees. So with coordinating, we have, uh, sometimes we have the different departments working together to accomplish a task. Let's look at an example of coordinating. So, Within the school, just using an example that you're familiar with, the manager, the principal, may encourage, um, let's say, the information technology department to work with the science department, with the, maybe a physics teacher, to actually um, accomplish a task. Maybe they work on a robotics pro project or a robotics program, and that's coordinating, ensuring that there is some correlation um, or working together of uh, different parts or different teams within the organization. Now, your definition of delegation may be assigning tasks, and that is exactly what management is responsible for doing, or one function. So when we look at delegating, it's sharing or transferring responsibilities from the superior or manager to the subordinates or employees. So a good manager is able to identify whether it is that they look at the, the, the previous work of the staff within the organization or they examine their um, resume and see where each um, individual is best suited. And in assigning tasks, they may assign tasks based on the strengths of employees or the strengths of teams. So delegating involves identifying the strengths of the employees and assigning tasks based on their strong area or their areas of specialization. And in delegating, it also ensures that the, sometimes the work is divided. So in delegation, we have, sometimes we have division of labor, sometimes we have specialization happening, but um, management delegates and assign duties, break down tasks into, into different parts and assign different tasks to different members within the organization based on their strengths and abilities that they have demonstrated. So delegating is one key um, function of management. Motivating is another key function. You know, when you are motivated as students, you know, you are encouraged to give your best because you want a good grade. The motivation can be a little sweetie or um, some other ways in which you are commended for good work. And it's the same way motivation encourages people in, in, in establishments, in business. So um, motivating is a key role of management. And in doing so, you know, it encourages staff to give off their best. It encourages staff to really... Um, perform um, at the peak of their potential 
whether or not they are being directly um, supervised. So motivation is defined, is defined as energizing and directing and sustaining employees' efforts. You want people to be, when they wake up in the morning, they feel encouraged to, to get up and go to work because it's a place where it's not a toxic work environment. Um, people feel safe in their work environment and they feel as if they are being rewarded. And there are different ways in which um, staff can be motivated. We talk about um, giving, it could be monetary incentive, it could be um, recogn publicly recognizing um, good work, and you know, people love to be praised and encouragement sweetens labor. So motivation is a good way to get your staff or to get staff within an organization to give off their, their best at their job. So motivation or motivating is a task that management may do to ensure that staff feel empowered. Effective managers have that ability to motivate those they work with to behave in a specific goal-directed way, and this will likely empower staff to work consistently whether or not the management is present and motivation is good for staff morale. Moral. It really um, encourages people to even work together and create a type of synergy that um, is cohesive within the organization. Now, we're going to look at some responsibilities of management. So we ha we're moving away from the functions that management play and we're looking at what are their obligations um, with, the, with their leadership role? What are their obligations? And to whom are they obligated? So the management of an organization has an obligation to fulfill towards owners and shareholders, um, employees, society at large, customers, and government. Now, now let us look at the responsibility of management to each of these stakeholders in the, of the business. And we're starting out with owners and the shareholders. Now, owners and shareholders are those risk takers, the entrepreneurs who um, invest their equity and they're looking forward to a return on their investment. And you may be questioning, well, we have owners and shareholders, aren't they managers? In some cases, we have uh, um, people who own businesses and they um, employ management, those who have been trained and those who have the expertise, the years of experience in managing an establishment. Therefore, they may en enthrust the, the responsibility of management to someone else or to a team. So that team or that someone else, the manager or management, really has the responsibility to owners and shareholders to provide um, reliable feedback to, to these investors. Because when they invest their money, they're looking forward to a return. So they're also looking forward to management providing them with uh, accurate and reliable information about the performance of the business so that they can plan the way forward and know um, how to really deal with uh, um, certain crisis in the business or certain performance in the business. So owners invest money in companies and in return, management has the responsibility to increase the value of owners' investments through profitable operations. So it's an obligation that manage, management has to really honor to, to report um, accurate information about the company's general performance and um, the foresee, what, is, what is really foreseen to be happening in the future um, performance of the business. Management also has the responsibility to employees. And this is something that must be really taken serious because man, the responsibility to employees, um, management is responsible for providing employees with a safe and healthy place to work. Um, employees want to know that when they show up at work, they're safe. Um, it's a healthy environment. Um, they are not exposed um, to anything that will be harmful to their health. Um, 
management must ensure that in carrying out their responsibilities to employees, that the, the environments are free from discrimination, um, discrimination, whether it be uh, colorism or um, a sexism, or it can be racism and, um, well, sexual orientation, discrimination. So environments that are free from sexual har harassment and all types of discrimination, that's one responsibility of management to its employees to ensure that that environment is fostered within the, um, the business. Another responsibility to the employees is to provide appropriate wages and benefits for the employees. And not only to provide the appropriate wages and benefits, but to honor um, the, the contracts that have been signed to ensure that employees are actually taking home the pay that they have um, signed to, the pay that they have agreed to. So um, the appropriate wages and benefits are actually one thing that can actually motivate employees to know that they're getting the right amount of pay. And if it is that they uh, have a promotion, they have an increase in their, in their benefits, um, or whether or not they have any promotion. But in some cases where they might work on, um, and their pay is really based on, well, commission, based on how much work they put in, that their time is honored and it reflects in their wages that they're taking home. And other benefits too, like people look forward to their vacation time and so on. And it's the obligation of management to ensure that um, persons receive their, their due leave of absence from, absence from work as long as it is, um, it is uh, credible. So responsibilities to employees also include transferring successfully the goals and missions and visions of the organization. And this is a key role that management must play because for any business to really function, you have to, we have to have um, a transferal of uh, the goals, the mission, the final outcome of the, of the production within the organization and the service delivery to really um, be successful. And in doing so, management must be able to translate um, or pass on to the employees the intended, ob the intended outcome or goals of the organization so they can work towards um, achieving those goals together. Another responsibility, even though, you know, you might be thinking, well, people are showing up for work and um, it conflicts is something that must be avoided. Yes but it's just one of those things that happens in establishments and that is just one responsibility that management has to take on. So one of its responsibility is to resolve conflicts as they arise within the organization and provide amicable resolution um, in conflicts. Management may also take on the responsibility of leading and motivating employees as one of its key function uh, mentioned. Now let us look at the responsibility to its customers. The customers are the reason um, businesses thrive, businesses grow. Um, in addition to the, the employees, of course, who put in the effort and you know, generate profit, but the customers are really where the revenue comes from. And the management has that responsibility to its customers to ensure that there is customer satisfaction. So the purpose of any business is to satisfy its customers and management must develop some um, ethos or some culture um, that ensures that the following rights of the consumers are met. The first is that the products that they offer that comes out of that establishment, they're safe for the consumers. Uh, the right to be informed about products. So management must ensure that there is adequate information out there about their products. And um, I heard an advertisement about the fact that companies in Jamaica are really being encouraged to disclose information to um, the customers about their products. 
and the ingredients that they have in their products because that is one responsibility that they have to customers. Management has to really um, ensure that this is carried out. So the right to be informed, customers have the right to be informed um, about the products, about if the products are harmful, what are the possible effects of the products and uh, um, what the customer should do if it is that they have any side effects. It can also be um, in all the ingredients that are put into um, making that, those products. Um, custom, the, another responsibility of management to customers is that they ensure that the right to choose is allowed or given to customers and the right to be heard management must ensure that customers feel as if they are being heard. One of those things that um, some companies try to avoid is to upset customers. And that is the reason uh, management ensures that those who, persons who are the face of the company are properly trained to really um, manage issues as they come in. Customers have a right to report if they have any issue with any products or service. And in, in, in ensuring that the right to be heard is really um, enforced, um, what management can do is to <laughs> put a suggestion box. You may see some companies may do that. Management can also ensure that all issues at a, at a certain scale come straight to, to management um, as it pertains to customers. Um, because some customers are really um, key customers that are always uh, returning clients to the business and they are important to the bottom line of the business. The responsibility to government. The management is also responsible um, in ensuring that the organization is tax compliant. And this is a key point because um, you know, it is important that businesses that are established um, are tax compliant and it comes from management and leadership of the establishment. Another responsibility that management has to the government is to abide by the environmental regulations. So government uh, may, may put in place laws that are to be abide by, abided by and uh, it's the management's duty to ensure that those regulations are, are, um, ab are really adhered to. Abiding by the labor laws, and this is one thing that this is a key thing that, that happens worldwide. When we talk about management not necessarily abiding by the labor laws, abiding by labor laws meaning the provision of um, a proper and safe working environment, um, ensuring that uh, people are not paid below the minimum wage um, and ensuring that the, the environment that is created for employees are conducive and are according to the laws that are stipulated. Another responsibility is to avoid involvement in corruption and it comes from the top. So management must ensure that um, it uh, is abreast of the happenings, the key happenings in the organization and in, uh, try to avoid the involvement of any form of corruption. And it is also the responsibility of management to government to disclose to the tax administration accurate financial data when filing taxes. And this is, this is one thing that um, it must not be a practice that is enforced in organizations where um, there is uh, an inaccuracy in the reporting of financial data so that there is tax avoidance or um, reporting um, lesser returns or less, lesser um, income so that the taxes you pay are less. It's not really supposed to happen. So one obligation that management has to the government is to ensure that there's accurate financial data being reported. Um, and in doing so, ensuring that the right amount of taxes are being paid. Let us now look at the responsibility of management to society at large. Now, when we look at the responsibility of management to society, we talk about social responsibility and social welfare. Now, 
Social responsibility, we can define it as the obligation or commitment of managers to take steps for protecting or improving the social welfare, um, along with protecting the interest of, um, of the company. Now, in carrying out its responsibility to society, managers can ensure that the company's products have limited or no negative externalities um, and are environmentally safe. So we say negative externalities are spill off from the production or consumption of goods and services. Um, a negative externality can be just, just some basic examples. Um, if I'm a producer of cigarette and you, um, we have consumers of cigarette, whether in the production process or the consumption process, um, if it is that the environment is being harmed or if it is that we have uh, um, people within the environment, their health has been compromised due to either the production process or the consumption process of cigarette. Those are what we call negative externalities. It is a spill off from the production process that does not well, that affects those who are not producers or consumers. You are basically bystanders um, in the production or consumption process. So um, that is one responsibility to society, ensuring that there is limited or no negative externalities. And usually um, companies are mandated as to how much carbon emission they can really um, produce or they may be encouraged to find more environmentally friendly um, ways to produce or to find better ways to really um, produce their goods so as to ensure that their responsibility to, their responsibility to society is really honored. Um, another responsibility is to engage the community or they can engage the community within which the business is are established so management this is one thing that management can do and uh, in doing so they may do things like sponsor football or cricket games they may sponsor um, back to school programs or do offer scholarships to people within the community um, where those businesses are established so it's not necessarily that managers are obligated to um, provide these sponsorships to society, but um, they, it's an option that they can do to ensure that um, their clientele, the people within their community are served in a particular way or recognized. They can sponsor programs such as healthcare and education, um, scholarship programs, or school technology programs. And this is a time at which you may, you may see um, businesses actually trying to really carry out management, trying to really enforce its um, social responsibility. And here I have two pictures that you can see um, the Digital Foundation um, carrying out its social responsibility. Um, it's and Carreras Limited offering um, scholarships. We have NCD um, doing that as well. And you have other examples around us that we can actually um, see businesses from its management um, carrying out its social responsibility. Now, an organizational chart is really one um, strategy that we can actually use to um, observe the structure of the organization and from management um, all the way down, the reporting relationships. So um, you can look up additional information on organizational charts. And um, in another session, we can go back to our organizational charts. So today we were able to look at uh, uh, the management in business and uh, in doing so we were able to examine the definition of management, describe the functions of management, look at the responsibilities of management, define or well we kind of just browse through what an organizational chart is and the other objectives we can uh, look at them at another time. So that's it for CSEC POB.